<laughs> dear ladies and dear few gentlemen, dear friends, I'm really honored to talk to you today here as a member of this panel, coming from the youngest member country of the European Union, Croatia. I recently had the opportunity to experience firsthand what it means to be a member of this internationally assembled union. Being in the political arena for a number of years, now I have seen both the progressive and undesirable aspects of politics. With this experience, in both my eight years as in office as mayor of Dubrovnik and uh, in uh, my three terms as uh, a member of Croatian National Parliament, and now as a member, few months as a member of European Parliament, I can tell you with assurance that strong resemblances of inequalities between men and women continue to exist, and they are a common habitual practice for too many individuals on both local and national level, as well as on the international level. Uh, to illustrate uh, only a few figures, uh, there are at the moment 45,848 uh, members of parliament worldwide women parliamentarians, which means 21.4% they are women. 21.4% are women. In Croatian Parliament, there are 19.8% of women. In European Parliament, we have at the moment 35% of women members, but the problem does not stop at the EU and political level. The United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women on both the local and global level shows that women are not nearly as represented as men are in businesses, in civil services, and in political positions where women continue to be a minority, despite any reasonable argument of being so. The position of European Parliament with regard to gender equality is clear. It is indeed a fundamental requirement of democracy, gender equality. A society cannot be free and democratic if the liberty and dignity of half of its members are not guaranteed and upheld. And the role of women in the political, economic and social life of society must be fully recognized and their participation encouraged. Not doing so is indeed to a great extent an economic and social absurdity. Women represent more than half of any society, and tapping into this vast reserve, releasing women's potential can in fact double the society's output. What nation in its right mind would hold back its economic and creative potential using it only by half or by less than a half? I was listening to the president of Finland, who, uh, former president of Finland. She said that investment in women is smart investment. I agree. In fact, the only reason for the persistent unequal treatment is our mental constructs, stereotypes, and prejudice built over centuries of inequality. To cut long story short, because there is one only minute left, I am convinced that politics cannot simply be a clash of individual ambitions, but must focus on responding to the citizens' demands. I believe that women contribute a different outlook on these issues, which is also the advantage of involving more women in politics. I am not saying that the issue of women's participation in political life has been resolved in Europe itself. Far from it. While certain countries show a considerable success in this area, especially Nordic countries, other parts of the continent still have a way to go. To conclude, to conclude, because I have to cut my story, I admire Malala, which we, uh, who, whom we saw a few minutes ago. I would like to welcome all female representatives of parliaments from all across the globe to share our experiences, to encourage changes, to insist on transforming the legislative framework, to empower women to be an example for all minorities an example that will positively impact and support the political, economic, and social conditions on today, of today's leaders. But above all, I would like to invite all women everywhere to believe in themselves, to be more active, more motivated, more self-conscious, and more courageous, as sometimes generosity alone, alone is not enough. Then we wouldn't need quotas. Thank you very much. <laughs>